it's, uh, it's lovely to have you here, Christian, uh, for, for this session to celebrate World Mental Health Day. And uh, I'm generally just, uh, just, just to be with you. Uh, and uh, you've got such beautiful energy and so much experience that uh, talking to you so far, I've already felt like you know, we, we learned a lot. And so it would be great if we could share that with everybody else today. Great. No, I'm, I'm very excited to be here. And it's, um, as you say, doing this on world mental health. And I think we were going to talk about anxiety, which I know a lot of uh, children suffer from it. And I know a lot of parents are very worried about their children. Um, so I thought we, we were going to talk about that. And I don't know um, whether you think we should explain what anxiety is or whether we just go straight into how to manage it given the time we've got? Oh, I think, you know, if we, if we just set the ground with um, just like, you know, exchanging our views on what anxiety is and uh, how it man manifests itself uh, either for, for children or for teenagers or, or generally within the family or, or even affecting the adults, I think that would be really helpful. Right, great. So, well, I mean, anxiety, I think we tend to, to think of anxiety as a, as a bad thing. I'm not sure if you'd agree, but it's such a common thing and we all have a degree of it, don't we? we everyone suffers from anxiety at some, some point. So I think one of the starting point is to realise that anxiety is quite normal, to kind of normalise it a little bit. Yeah, totally agree. And uh, well, I get anxious. I know my boys get anxious and... Uh, and actually that, that whole stigma around it that uh, you're supposed to be that superhero, you should not be anxious or worried about anything, uh, that, that's just something that uh, can be worry in development. But at the same time, as you say, when you name it, so it's almost like name the dragon, you cannot fight something if you don't know what it is. But then if you know that those butterflies or you know other ways that, that that anxiety manifests itself, you can kind of process that and work through that. Exactly, I think that's it. I think you've hit it. Um, getting children to recognize signs of anxiety in their body or you know their heart beating faster, their breath, um, out of breath, breath, getting breathless. I think that's a really good starting point because if you don't, as you say, recognise it, you can't use skills to manage it. So I think that's, that's a really good point. And I think, um, you know, there's lots of, some, ch some children and some adults are more prone to anxiety. I think many adults learn coping strategies, but it, 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 it can be triggered by stressful events such as moving house, you know, issues at school, exams, bullying, um, there's also a bereavement, all sorts of things can trigger anxiety, but it, it's making sure that you help children to recognise it and to find a way to manage it. I think that's the key thing, it's, it's, it's learning skills. And um, I also think it's, it, avoidance can be good in the short term, but that's one of the key things that actually maintains anxiety and can help it to, or can make it worse. So I think that's important. Um, and, and I know we're going to look at some exercises where we can recognise anxiety, but I think, um, you know, a good starting point is in our, our bodies. So really noticing, as you said, the butterfly, the tummy, and, and sort of maybe just really acknowledge that. Or if you've got, if you draw for your child or even for teens, if you have an outline of a body and ask them to be on that outline or draw something that represents where in the body that feeling is and what it what it is for them like butterflies in the tummy or the chest or those just put colours in various parts depending on on the de degree of the symptom or, or the way it feels. So I think that's that's quite one thing that I know works quite well with children helping them to understand how anxiety presents in their bodies so that gives them a real um, tangible way of recognising that anxiety. Yeah, the other thing is also not to let that state to be prolonged and uh, not to make it something that is chronic and, uh, and it's unmanaged. So uh, that's why I liked in one of our conversations when you say just check in on your own mental health. So 
it's it's a it's a constant process of, of doing that. It's not that you're good now and you are good forever. It's it's almost like you know check in, check out, check in, check out. And especially in relation to children, we very often face situations when our children say, Freddie does say that as well. Oh, I can't go to school, I, I've got butterflies in my stomach, or you know, I'm not feeling well. And for me, it's always the thought, what is there behind? Well, obviously he may be unwell, but is there something happening at school that he's feeling anxious, he tries to avoid and like withdraw from the situation? And, uh, and then by, well, first of all, trying to find out the, uh, uh, the, the physical reason for that anxiety, what causes that, as you said earlier, moving house, bereavement, bullying at school, and then how is it that we can, what tools can we get out of our box to, to help us manage that situation so not to avoid it, not to procrastinate it, but actually manage that. And anxiety doesn't have to be a, a scary world with a, with a big A. It, it can be fun, you know, it, you, can, you can say, well, I'm just managing my anxiety now and that should be, should be normal. And hopefully with the practices that we, we show uh, next, it, it will be something that you actually see uh, that is fun. So don't sleep, Freddie. Okay. In our box, actually, we're going to do a couple of breathing exercises in a minute. But one thing that actually we do for children as well is to make some literally an anxiety box. So maybe a, a old cardboard box and put things in there that children know that they like and that they can know that help to soothe them so so like a, a self-soothe box um, maybe have your favorite toy or pictures of a favorite place or you can have some nice room spray or a coloring book anything that you know helps you to calm down as a child and recognizing Freddie what, what helps you calm down is the one thing when you're anxious that, that helps you Thing. Yes. <laughs> well, what about tea you drink? Did that help? A nice, a nice tea with with honey in it. You were drinking that last time we spoke. Yeah. Yes. So that's soothing. So it's things like that. I think if we if we have things that we know we can go to the minute we recognise those symptoms of anxiety, as well as these great techniques that we're going to show you. So I don't know if you want to start, Joe, and then do take. Yeah. Care. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's those uh, little routines that uh, make us feel better. Uh, but uh, at home, what we try to, to practice, uh, a, a couple of things that um, when, you, when you feel down or anxious, uh, we try to practice lying down next to the wall with our legs up and maybe just uh, quickly show that. We've got those pillows, we simply lie down with our bottoms as close to the wall as possible okay. and then just okay. uh, with our legs raised up against the wall we let the uh, parasympathetic nervous system take over control and tell our brain that that's time to unwind and obviously it will not happen within 30 seconds but if you lie down like this for, you know, five, ten minutes, for as long as you feel it, it's comfortable, then you, you notice the difference. It's that your body is just uh, reacting differently. <laughs> your belly muscles. So that's one that we do quite often. And the other one is uh, child's pose. Uh, so we just lie down on the mat with uh, our head between our ne legs and, uh, and lie down trying to feel safe and uh, uncomfortable like you would have felt when you were in your mom's womb <laughs> and I actually have a confession to make one day when I walked into Freddie's bedroom I found him like that so I said poor Freddie what are you doing and he says well you know I feel a little bit uneasy about and I can't remember what it was it was something at school and uh, I'm worried about it so I thought I'd just lie down like this and and rest until I gather that internal strength well he didn't use this word uh, but um, 
No, it was literally like that. Uh, and, and you can see how, so what you said about soothing, um, well, not rituals, but things that you do. So I also try to introduce those, those physical movements uh, for the boys so they actually recognise that uh, it, it is helpful in certain situations to do just that. Great. No, I think that's a good... Child's pause, as we know that in yoga, is such a soothing pause, isn't it? And sort of come inside and, and um, it's very relaxing, isn't it? And relaxes tension in the back and the shoulders. Yeah. You obviously get up. Um, another one, when we were talking about check-in, sometimes a good way uh, with children and, and adults too is to, um, you know, if, if, if I'm starting a new mindfulness group, I would ask people to check in with their weather. They might not expose their feelings straight off, but they might be happy to relate it. Like if I give them an example, if you're feeling great, you might be uh, sunny. So if you're feeling really happy, you might be sunny. If you're feeling a bit foggy or tired, you might be cloudy. You might be both of those things. You feel lots of things at once. So this exercise is quite a fun thing to do. Um, I'll just tip my phone a little bit forward. And it's a kind of key going based exercise, but what I like about it is it's movement and breathing. So it's very kind of yogic in that way. So um, I've got my, you, you can't see my legs, but I'm standing with my feet together. And, and, and the, the, no, not the feet together, my feet in line, but hip distance apart, so they're parallel. Taking a step back, and I've got my front knee bent, as you see, got my front knee bent like this. So I'm, I'm quite nice and steady and solid in the base of my position. So actually that's quite good. So if you take one foot forward towards me, Freddie and Joe, one foot forward, that's it. And sort of bend that front knee slightly. Maybe take your feet a little bit wider apart, Freddie, so that you're really, do you feel steady there? Yeah. In the base, so that's Now we take a big breath in and take our arms up. And then as we breathe out, we're going to come, bring the weight forward onto that front leg, but keeping both feet on the ground and part the cloud, let in the sunshine. So breathe in and then part the cloud, let in the sunshine. So kind of open. So breathing in, even stand there. And <laughs> Yeah, my sunshine, Freddie. Let's do it. As in yoga, you've got to do everything on the other side. So take a big step forward with the other foot. Bring the back foot forward now. And again, getting that really steady, stable stance. Breathing in. And then parting. Breathe in. Parting the back. Forward so that's just getting into a bit of a rhythm with that and you'll find i find in, in classes people will do that for quite a long time it becomes very soothing itself so that's uh, one that and i find that's one that yeah. that's great do you remember on um, on our rehearsals before the live events uh, you were also showing a counter the breath and especially extending exhalation, almost as if demonstrating that through that exhalation, you're just letting things go that's no longer serving you. And I've, I've got this very um, nice um, American yoga teacher, I really like him, uh, Travis Elliott, and he tends to say, what doesn't um, serve you doesn't deserve you, so let it go. <laughs> And uh, every time, even when I get anxious, I feel like, okay, I just, this doesn't deserve it, I'll let it go. So maybe we could practice that um, elongated uh, exhalation with you. Sure, I think don't get the breath, and that would include sounding like this And also, if you breathe that through a straw, if you use a a feather and you breathe to a feather that tends to extend the exercise but the one we were talking about was if you if you take um two hands up so on one 
hand have three fingers, on the other have five. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to count to three as we breathe in. So breathe in one, two, three, and then breathe out one, two, three, four, five. Breathe in one, two, three. Breathe out, one, two, three, four, five. And just continue that in your own time with your fingers. So one, three, two, three. So again, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Do that with your hands resting on your legs and you've always you know, you can just be touching your even one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five. So you've got your fingers to So that goes to anything that extends the exhalation is great. And the hissing breath I mentioned, bring your hands here like this on your chest. Mm -hmm. and, um, breathe in, away, as you breathe out, As if you're letting air out of a giant ball or a tire. Breathe in, out. So breathe in. So I don't know how everyone's feeling after doing that, but I find that again, that's one that really works for me. For breathing, we also have balloons here. So uh, that's another thing that I just showed the boys a little while ago. Lie down on the balloon on your belly and then just literally watch the movement of the balloon, how it moves up and down. So that also can help to put your balloon on the belly, buddy. Uh, helps to like, notice your breath and the breath only, rather than focus your attention on everything else that is around you. So you can gently just hold that balloon, and breathe in, push your belly up, and balloon moves up, and then breathe out, ready, and balloon descends. And again, breathe in, balloon marshes up, and breathe out, it goes down. And uh, I've also noticed that uh, if, uh, if, you, if you do that for uh, maybe three, four, five minutes and that attention is just focused on the balloon, and you're almost tricking your mind to, to not to think about anything else, but uh, just that one thing. And with balloons especially, they're just so kind of joyful. We can see those joys of <laughs> Uh, and, it's, uh, and, and then connect that with breath. It, it can be something that uh, the kids may, may want to do, as well as things uh, to, to kind of focus attention on, on something uh, different than, than the thoughts that are, are growing in your mind. That's, uh, that's great. Hopefully that's given people a, a little bit of an idea of what anxiety is and not that it's a natural thing and also a few a few ways to, to deal with it so um, I'm sure you post things on your feed I put quite a lot of things up that are helpful for breathing techniques and, and for a lot of those things in my courses so if anyone wants to find out more just follow me on Instagram so, and uh, Christian, is there anything to, uh, to sh that you'd like to share on uh, on relaxation to, to maybe wrap up uh, the session today I think together for quite a long time. So um, maybe focus. So maybe actually, if you two want to lie down, that that we can all relax by watching you being. Relaxed. Just lie down in your bus now. And just let your body become very heavy 
And what we're going to do is we're going to go through various parts of the body. And you can almost imagine that you've got a little butterfly landing on each part. And as it lands, we'll just repeat these phrases silently for ourselves. So imagine, let your body completely relax and thought. Take a few breaths, breathe all the way and then all the way out. And just a little butterfly, that friendly, happy butterfly is landing on your toes. And repeat silently. I relax my toes. My toes are relaxed. So just saying that in a, a voice inside your head that no one else can hear. And then the butterfly flutters onto your ankles and lower legs. I relax my ankles. Are relaxed. And then the butterfly flutters onto the, the top of your leg, thigh. I relax my thighs. My thighs are relaxed. The butterfly lands on your hip. That's repeating after me. I relax my hip. My hips and body are relaxed. I relax tummy and lower back. My tummy and lower back are relaxed. I relax my rib. My rib cage is relaxed. I relax my arms and hands. My arms and hands are relaxed. I relax my shoulders. My shoulders are relaxed. I relax my throat and neck. My throat and neck are relaxed. I relax my face. My face is relaxed. My body and mind are completely relaxed. And then just very gently wriggling your toes and slowly up. And you might want to just check in with how you after that. And you can see. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Christian. I feel like I'm, I'm ready for bed. I'm not sure about you. <laughs> But it was fantastic and and you can when you say about that butterfly, I think it's just particular effect because you almost feel like that gentle touch on the parts of your body and, and it's almost like a magic wand that tension disappears and uh, that, that's another one holding tension in, in your body. Uh, I need to remind myself and relax your shoulders and then I find my shoulders literally by my ears all the time. But thank you so much, Christian, for, for sharing all of that. Really, really appreciate that. We will practice some of those from, from tonight. Well, actually, maybe tomorrow because we will be beautifully relaxed now. So thank you. I thank you to everybody who listened to us tonight. I hope you found it uh, useful and you will help your families. And uh, we'll see you soon at the next uh, session uh, in, uh, in November. Thank you again, Christian. Goodbye.